the head mm. of the Furry Raiders, Foxler, who in reality is a half Thai man who's in a homosexual relationship with a black guy, <laughs> is the subculture's definition of Hitler. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All the effort of dancing. Get him. Show him. Show him. There we go. There we go. There you go. There you go. Look at him. He's a gamer. He's a, he's willing to come in and uh, and make it happen. Now, for those of you saying, what's happening? Uh, let me uh, fill you in. This. So our, our next guest. First off, you can follow him on Twitter at Master Zelox. Z e l o x. Or for Canadians, they say Zed. Zed. Which I've gotten into a fight with my. I, I got. I'd gotten into a fight with my professor about that in school. As you should have. Correct me, Zed. Mm. And I said. Hold on, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, A, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Z. And the teacher said, you're out. You're out. So that was about it. <laughs> uh, our next guest is, there's, there's a subculture classified as uh, furries. Now, I had encountered these, you know this, at, yep. a, at a Western Michigan flea market at mm-hmm. uh, one point, and I, I had no idea what was going on. So the subculture with, I guess there are a lot of misconceptions, and I have to be honest, I don't know exactly what the furry subculture is. Most people think it's a sex thing. I've heard it's not necessarily. Uh, but our next guest, actually, there's, there are several different layers there because mm-hmm. he is to the right of center of most furries, and so he's deal, had to deal with some ostracization there. Sure. So, uh, Master, Ze- Master Zellox, thank you for being here, sir. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Well, I, I, I'm glad to have you. So, now, uh, okay, Marley was dead to begin with. Right? Let, let's set the stage here. I, I, I have to acknowledge... When I don't know what I don't know, explain to me the furry subculture. Is is if a lot of us think it's is it people who dress up like animals and and, and go gangbusters? No, no, that's a small portion, but okay. you'll find a small portion of most of anything in the subculture actually. Okay. Um, furry essentially is anyone who identifies as such becomes or can integrate into the subculture. Uh, what a furry is is someone who enjoys characters that have uh animals with human characteristics okay also known as anthropomorphic characters right and if you enjoy those characters in different mediums uh movies books shows all kinds of things then you can self-identify with the label of furry and be one okay so now are uh Z- master zelox or do you prefer Z- zelox quo Oh, Zelox is fine. Okay, Zel- Zelox, thank you. We'll be casual. Um, are you, do you dress like this all the time? Like, do you work like this? Or do you go into work like this? Or is this something that you do as, as, as a hobby? This is... Uh, okay, interesting question. Okay. It is a hobby for some. It's a lifestyle for others. It's a aspect of being for many. Okay. For me, I've, I've been a furry since I was 12, the majority of my life. Uh, I, I created this this costume myself, and uh, I wear it on occasion, but only occasionally. Okay, so you so you're not going you're not going to work, you're not going into your your, your day job dressed as this. <laughs> Absolutely not. Well, I don't know. This I isn't. Was, <laughs> here's what I will tell you: the weirdest thing that I had ever seen I was afraid of flea market. Okay, and this was a person dressed up like a a, a fox. Mm-hmm. But the weirdest part to me was this person was just going through a flea, and I had never encountered this before, and. Uh, not gay Jerry knows this story, but he had the fox outfit, and then he had a button down and breeches over the fox outfit, <laughs> like it was the fox's casual Friday. And I was going, "Oh yes, I didn't." So, so this is the fox in work clothes. Is 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 that pretty common? Because we're several layers deep into the. Your guess is as good as mine at that point. Human characteristics. It's wearing clothing. Okay. It doesn't need to. It has fur. It would be absolutely pointless and too hot. Right. But. <laughs> It has human characteristics. Okay. So this is, so it seems to me like for a lot of people, this is more of a, uh, uh, at least even if it's a lifestyle, this isn't necessarily, you're not pushing legislatively to have furry bathrooms. Oh. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's fun. It's, it's, it's dress up. It's fun. It, some it, people feel the re- it's a release for some people. Oh yes. It's, it's escapism. It is enjoyment. It is for many a way to enjoy and express themselves. Like Comic-Con. Yes. Okay. That's the, see, it doesn't sound now, so weird to me. Yeah. Yeah, but okay, yeah. There are a lot of adults, and as a result, there are adult aspects of the cub subculture. Of course, you get these kind of things. Well, and okay. you will also find within the subculture 
a far more significant proportion of GLBTI, et cetera, individuals. Yes. Well, that was going to be my follow-up question. What would you wager percentage-wise? Some people are into the whole furry thing just for the, the, the kinky stuff. Just for the kinky stuff, I would say none. Okay. Because okay. You, are, you are focusing solely on the kinky. You have to remember there is the, the enjoyment aspect, the personality, the enjoyment of animals. There's, there's all of these other concepts. Right. Okay. So for, for uh, what would you say percentage-wise? Let me rephrase percentage-wise of people who are attracted to the sexual component to it more than the, the expression, the fun? Well, what would you say percentage-wise are people who are out there having fun, dressing up, versus people who are primarily attracted to, you know, uh, the, the, the furry sex parties? I, I can't even pretend to imagine I could know that number, unfortunately. <laughs> Well, you know, because this is the this is the this is how people perceive it, obviously, um, and a big part of it is because of the LGBTQAIP push. So I, I know, obviously, you don't uh, you're I don't believe you're a part of that community. You are more. How would you describe yourself? Uh, conservative, libertarian, right leaning. I am a left leaning libertarian, and I would describe myself as part of that group, actually. Oh really? Okay, I apologize. See, they got, I got it wrong. Well, no, then, no, that's that's entirely and no, it's well, fine. Then why do they? Why why all the hate? Why are people so angry with you? I mean, I've, I had to do some digging to make sure that none of the claims were true. And I, I see a star of David there. You know, Nazi, crazy alt writer. This is what they've said to you about you. And I know you've had some some backlash just for expressing different opinions. So if you are a part of that community well, and you're a left leaning libertarian and you're a furry, why don't you get the hall pass? In the furry subculture, the Overton window is so far left, and it was left to begin with. But in the last few years, ever since the election of Trump, it has been pushed further left and further authoritarian. Okay. As a result, anyone moderately left, centrist, libertarian, conservative, all of these individuals are getting targeted and told that they're Nazis, their views are bad, they need to leave the subculture. Okay, so... They want you. What? How? Forget, how do they dox a furry? Do they? Do they figure? I mean, do do you all know each other's identities, or is it generally kept from each other in the community, and you only live under these kind of pseudonyms? How? How are they able to find right. you, or have they have they banned your furry uh, uh, identity character, as it were? Yes, because the the furry identity and character is you. It okay. it is it is your expression of self within the community. Okay, so you couldn't for. But but do some furries have different furry outfits, different furry characters? Oh yes, absolutely. Okay. There, there are many who have multiple, okay. and they flip constantly. But you tend to know who they are. So if you were to change, let's say, an outfit, if you were to build something, you'd think they would still know. I wouldn't want to. Zelox is me. Right. Well, yeah, you shouldn't listen. If you shouldn't have to, especially, I would think kind of the last bastion of say of safe space for. Being a little different it would be freedom. You know what I mean? I mean, listen, I mean, we, I'm sure you and I don't line up on a whole lot, but I would think, like, they That's, should be yeah. taking anyone they, anyone they can get, all-encompassing. This, this is bizarre. That's the most bizarre component of this to me, if you can believe that. <laughs> it's, it has gotten to an extreme the last year or so, I would say. Um, all, all kinds of interesting things have been happening in the subculture. The... The cutting back on freedom of speech and expression, that there have been numerous individuals who've told jokes, and then from the jokes, they have had their panels and their events banned at furry conventions. And they can't present anymore, they can't run things because they've said an inappropriate joke once. Okay, forgive me here. But you're you're dressed in I don't I don't know what this is. Uh, a, a, is it a wolf sort of cut? What would you describe? It's it? uh, I I I. Okay, well then I don't need to risk offending. I, I, would, I would say a hybrid uh, to to give it a single word. Okay, all right. So so then I I don't think you're the kind of guy who's easily offended. So uh, let me put it this way: you're dressed in a hybrid wolf horn costume uh, at a furry convention with other people, some of whom are having sex dressed in animal costumes. What oh what could be considered a joke so offensive that it's ban worthy? Do you recall your um, Anne Frank jokes video? Yes. Yes. I that do. would be it. Really? <laughs> oh, yes, absolutely. Not a high tolerance for Anne, for the Anne Frank genre of humor, the furries? I, if you went to a furry convention, I believe you would be called a Nazi. Oh, I, the, I, the, I have no doubt. Yeah. The categorization of Nazis is so extreme that there is an individual, uh, Len Gilbert. He, he's written a book 
are out of the ruins. The main character of this book is a soldier from our world who's transported to a furry world and many anthropomorphic creatures around there. The character happens to be a part of the World War II German army. Okay. In this fictional book, he is now a Nazi. Right. He, he's been doxxed, harassed, his work's been called all kinds of horrible things. Because of the and, book? Uh, yes. Like The Last Furry Castle? A script writer for that would be, would be banned? Ah, uh, potentially. Gosh. I don't know what they'd think of Das Boot. <laughs> okay, let me, let, me, let me, let's make sure to clear the air here, because you'll have people say, you're a Nazi. Let me, let me make sure. Uh, you don't hate Jews, correct? No. You don't believe anyone is racially inferior? No. Uh, you don't believe in nationalized socialism to the great uh, nation of Germany under Mein Fuhrer? <laughs> no. Okay. So, okay. I th listen, that, listen, folks. I did my due diligence. Passes the passes the sniff test. Um, there's a lot of other questions that I, I'm sure I'd be a little bewildered with 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 the answers. Well, let me ask you this too, because I, I know having done some research, and listen, I'm sure you can appreciate that. For me, this is going into a dark internet wormhole some of this stuff um yes. i did find out that there's an alignment <laughs> thank you i appreciate your candor an alignment with antifa and the furries it, it almost like you see this oh, kind of with yes. with pussy hats and black lives matter and 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 march for 15 it's it's this odd amalgamation and it seems like that, that's permeated the furry community as far as political activism am, am, am i getting that right why absolutely you are in fact it's it's not just activism it is recruiting and attempting to prove that they're right. And it has gotten to the point where one of the major furry subculture specific websites broke its own terms of service to change a code of conduct instantly without warning to remove several groups of people and several people who have been uh, performing things off site that they didn't agree with. Okay, and now and, uh, and, and what? And they're banning them because they're they're banning. Oh yes, them? absolutely. Okay, the, it's primarily two groups: the the furry raiders and alt furry. Now, alt furry, the name is a joke. It's a parody of the alt right, right. on purpose. And the furry raiders are a group of furry individuals who are friends. Uh, well, where does furry raiders the, come from? I am, I'm going to have to call you on that. What is? What's the meaning to furry it, it, raiders? <laughs> It comes from Second Life. It was founded in Second Life, and they would raid particular areas and do some trollish type jokes. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, okay. And they're all Nazis because they wear an armband with right. a paw print on it. Um, the head of the furry raiders, Foxler, who in reality is a half Thai man who's in a homosexual relationship with a black guy. <laughs> is the subculture's definition of Hitler. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know what to do with that. And here's the thing. Usually we have some kind of a call to, like, I, I, I don't think there's much we can, we can do to help you. Uh... Oh, no. But <laughs> being able to talk about this at all is assistance. Okay. Well, thank you. I, appreciate... <laughs> I mean, I'd be like, you know, like free Tommy Robinson. We just came off the head. It's like, listen, we don't, I don't know the Thai guy. I don't know his gay black lover. Uh, and I know nothing. So there's, there's nowhere I can direct people. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, okay. A, a good example of you speaking of Antifa in the fairy subculture would, again, be back to fur affinity. They, they have been banning people who have been speaking out against domestic terrorists recruiting on site. Right. Because one thing is true about fairies. They are mostly disenfranchised social outcasts. I would imagine, yeah. As a result, it's a very palatable area for this kind of ideology to recruit from. It's, it's, they're, they're in an area trying to have escapism, trying to enjoy themselves, the perfect place for propaganda to take place. 
I, I would imagine, and, and a lot of people are going to give me flack for this, I would imagine that the, the, the prototypical furry is someone who is probably a social outcast, like you said, probably very intelligent, as opposed to social outcasts who might join gangs or who might just turn to drugs. This is probably somebody who's an outcast with an overly uh, active, creative mind, and so this is an outlet, it's a way to express themselves where they feel safe. So I, I would imagine that would be fertile recruiting grounds, because you're looking for people who are care. You know, a lot of people can become charismatic in character or in another in another oh, yes, identity. absolutely. And um, my, my brother was that way, and a lot of comics I used to work with were very, very nervous before going on stage, and they had these personas, and they were incredibly intelligent. Um, but a lot of them were very needy, you know? And I would imagine that's probably very similar mm. with a lot of people. Oh, and, and, but practical question. How, how do you beat the summers? Because it's hot as Satan's butt crack down here, and I don't think you'd see many furries in Texas. That's true. What do you do? Come to Australia. We have incredibly hot summers, which I believe are worse than Texas occasionally. Yeah. And I... what you do is, in the large fursuits, if you happen to see them, fursuits are a furry subculture specific term for the mascot costumes designed of your character. Okay. You have a couple of fans. Okay. okay. <laughs> Thank you. And you live with it. Yeah, okay. But, I mean, I appreciate the explanation, but that's kind of what I would have guessed fursuits meant. I mean, it's not like a, it's not like there was a curveball. <laughs> um, okay. Well, oh, all right. So there we go. So and they would probably have like they have some kind of a fanning mechanism in there. Yes. Yes. There's a couple of computer fans usually in the muzzle area. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, listen. I appreciate. Uh, listen. I would love to have you back. And I. I. I, I listen. I. First off, legislatively, the second the furry, if furries start pushing for different bathrooms or teaching kids about f freedom, I'm, you know, I'm going to have some disagreements. And I think you understand that. We've had kind of the same relationship with, with Blair White. But uh, I hate to hear that you're ostracized from a community just for having different views, certainly as a, a more left-leaning libertarian. So you are at Master Zelox, Z-E-L-O-X. And uh, do educate. Come back. This has been illuminating for me. Even if I don't get it, even if I'm not on board with all of it, I, I appreciate you uh, helping us out, understanding this. Usually this is the point where I would tell you to subscribe or hit the notification bell up there because subscriptions don't mean a whole lot on YouTube. But if you haven't signed up now at ladderwithcrider.com slash mug club for all the daily content to support us, there's probably, there's not a pitch I can make here that'll work. So let me just tell you this. I have a cat in my basement right now. If you don't subscribe at ladderwithcrider.com slash mug club to support this content, I am going to kill him. If you don't subscribe... This cat in my basement will die.